Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to WordPress Event Talk, a Do The Woo podcast show. Well, today's show, of course, is a special show because there is a huge event just around the corner. And not only do I have wonderful guests here, but this is a very, not the first time, but we have one of our sponsors send somebody here virtually as a guest host. Bernard Meyer, how do you like this? How do you like being a co-host? It is my first time and... 30 seconds in, it is one of the most amazing experiences of my life. It's only going to get better. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you tell, just give a quick intro of who you are, because since, you know, this is really the first time you've been on the podcast. Uh, yeah. So my name, is, my name is Bernard Mayer. Uh, I'm the Senior Director of Communications and Creative at Omnisend. So Omnisend is one of the sponsors for WordCamp US. Actually, WordCamp US will be our one-year anniversary <laughs> of WordCamps. Because we just started last year at WordCamp US 2024, uh, 2023. So this will be a full year cycle. Uh, we are excited. Each WordCamp has been even better. This will be my first time at WordCamp US. So I'm expecting amazing things only because of what our CEO and VP of Marketing said about the last WordCamp US. And according to what I heard, this is going to be even better. I'm also a contributor on the marketing team and the media core team and an organizer on the WordCamp Asia communications team. So I'm deep in there. Uh, and yeah, that's my short version. <laughs> Very cool. Now, we have three of the organizers here, as we usually do on Do the Woo for the flagship word camps. We always love to get that pumped up. You know, we got to start talking about this. Everybody's excited. I'm flying all the way from Portugal there. I will say that I still question why they waited till I moved from the Pacific Northwest before putting a word camp up there, but I have my suspicions and that's for another entire podcast. So we won't get into that part of it. But anyway, we're going to have our three guests introduce themselves and we're going to dive into WordCamp US. So let's start with Katie. Hi all, I'm Katie Richards. I am one of the four folks on the lead organizing team for WordCamp US this year. This is my first time on the lead team. Last year, I was involved with WordCamp US uh, as the lead of the PR and comms team. So naturally, this year, I am working with PR and comms, but also with the volunteers and the photography teams, kind to uh, make sure that we have enough folks on the ground to make this event awesome and everyone knows what they need to know to have a successful event. When I'm not doing WordCamp stuff, I am the project manager of the community growth team at A2 Hosting. Oh, cool. Julia? Hello. Well, it's a delight to be here. And I last met Bernard in Taiwan at WordCamp Asia over a really lovely dinner. So it's good to see you again, Bernard. I, my name is Julia Gollum, and I also am part of the lead four for WordCamp US, along with Katie and Aaron, who are here, and then Sandy Edwards, who's not on this recording today. And I am sponsored by Automatic to contribute full-time to the WordPress community team. All right. And last but very not least, Aaron. So I'm, I'm Aaron Campbell. I'm also on that lead for team for WordCamp US. I've been in the WordPress space uh, a long time, probably I uh, guess going on almost 20 years now, contributing to the project for maybe 18 of those. Uh, used to contribute mostly through code, and now I contribute mostly through things like uh, organizing events like WordCamp US, uh, things like that. When I am not organizing WordCamp US, I am uh, director of product at A2 Hosting. All right. Excellent. Well, let's start first with Portland, Oregon. So tell us about Portland, Oregon. I, I could probably say a few things. I actually lived right between Portland and Seattle for many, 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 many years. So I've been to um, Portland a few times. Portland, what is special about Portland or what do you want to share about Portland? I am happy to start because I love Portland, Oregon as a city. I make an effort to visit every single year because one of my best friends lives there. And there, 
really the nature is what stands out to me. So there are mountains and rivers and the coast, the Pacific coast is a couple hours west of Portland, but just within the city, you can find hiking and beautiful views and also incredible food. Portland is really well known as a foodie hub and a coffee hub. So everyone who's coming to WordCamp US, I encourage you to venture out around Portland to find some great spots for dinner. And I have no doubt that everyone will be having some fabulous coffee while you're in town too. I, a, I, I have to agree with Julia. It's a beautiful place. The food and the coffee definitely speak to me, if you will. I love it. Um, I, I definitely take a little bit more of the the kind of pragmatic approach to describing the city in that I feel like it really fits our needs for a conference as well. And it's not easy to find a place for a conference like WordCamp US. It's it's not a 100,000 person conference, but we're also pretty big now and it can be hard to find a place. And we bring in a global audience, right? Finding a place that can fit us, that can serve our needs, that everybody can travel to easily, it's a big ask. And Portland really stepped up for us this year. Um, The city itself is helping us in a lot of ways. They put a lot of effort into uh, making sure that conferences can be held at this conference center and interact well with all the hotels and and shops and whatnot around. Um, So I'm really excited just that they have been able to pull together this experience for us and for everybody attending. Katie, have you ever been to Portland? or do I you... have not. Oregon is the one state on the West Coast that I have not been to, and I am very excited to check it off my bucket list. Um, but I am excited for this event in Portland for all of the reasons that Julia and Aaron have mentioned, but also knowing that this is the first of two years that we get to be in the same venue, the same location, get to know the city. I think it's going to really enhance our experience this year, but also next year as we regather and kind of have like a homecoming. I also want to add that the venue where WordCamp US is taking place this year is absolutely gorgeous. It was just renovated in 2019 through a $40 million renovation project. It's a super sustainable building. I think the maybe I want to say LEED Platinum, which in the U.S. is a a certification for building sustainability. So it's just a really nice place to be. And I'm excited to get to spend several days in such a beautiful space. I had a a question. So for WordCamp EU, we did a little music video and we were thinking about doing something at Omnicent for Portland. Uh, And I grew up in Miami and the furthest north I've been to the West Coast, but the furthest north was like San Francisco. So I don't know much about Portland, except I had two things in my head, nature and coffee. So I'm happy to know that it's a foodie culture as well. But there was one slogan when I was looking at Portland um, that I was wondering about. It's keep Portland weird. Uh, is that a is that a strong uh, character of, of Portland? Or a good description? Or is that something that's kind of kind of um, minimal? I think one of the cool ways that I see that coming through in Portland is the push for unique everything. Essentially, fewer chains and more unique one-offs. So um, my experience is in Portland, and I I maybe have not had as many as some of the others here, but restaurants that you just can't find anywhere else, experiences that you can't find anywhere else. To me, that's the weird part of Keep It Weird. And as someone who loves to experience places through their unique food, especially, I found that particularly fantastic that you didn't have to sort through um, a million chains that I can already get at my home in Oklahoma. There was plenty of unique stuff there. So I'm excited for our, our guests to be able to experience the same. I also want to add that there is a light rail that runs through Portland. And so there's good public transit to get directly from the airport. You just get on this light rail train and take it from the airport to the venue, the Oregon Convention Center, and the official WordCamp US hotel is directly across the street from the venue. And so you can go from your hotel to the airport and vice versa. 
via public transit. I think it's a, I want to say a $2 ticket. So people, of course, there's rideshare available in Portland and people can use that, but there's also the light rail as an option for getting around. I think keeping it weird, what I love about that is it's not only Portland's goal, but it like some, I think what Aaron said, it's a suggest, suggestion to everybody visiting. So it's like, yeah, be unique. And there's just little different parts of Portland that you'll find uniquely weird in one way or another. And how you define weird, you know, that can be something different for everyone. But I, I think that a lot of WordPressers will fit in well there. So I want to hear more about the actual venue. So let's go from Portland, zero in on the venue, talk a little bit about it, Julia. But there seems to be a lot of buzz around the venue. I'd love to hear from all three of you what it is that excites you about this venue, even though I don't know if any of you have had a chance to visit it, but just from what you're doing through research and planning. I have not had a chance to visit the venue. I have had the chance to watch some walkthrough videos that some of our folks have put together. There are a number of things that really excite me about this venue, though. Uh, My excitement really started to build when our designer, Sam, uh, was pulling together some of the design concepts for our WordCamp US site this year um, and was just pulling up photos from the venue to use as inspiration and kind of the the way that they've brought a lot of sort of that nature feel of the Portland area inside the venue. It was exciting. It was fun. Um, it was, it's going to be a really nice place to be. And then it continued to grow as I saw just how much space we're able to get at this venue. Something that we have struggled with um, over the last couple of years is getting enough space that's all close together for us to have our talks and our sponsors and all of our people, a couple thousand people all in one, uh, um, I guess, kind of cohesive group. Um, and this year we have that. I'm super excited about how much we're going to be able to do in the space, how uh, much we've been able to open things up to sponsors to be more creative because there's more space for them to be and for how we can sort of bring everyone together and not have to have some chunks of our you know, talks or sponsors or whatever really far away from everyone else. We can have, have lots of space and have it all in one place. And then the last thing that I want to point out that's been super exciting is the sustainability of the venue. And and uh, Julia brought this up and can probably speak a little bit more to it, but it's not just that the venue is sustainable in the way it was sort of built or the way that they operate. Um, they hold us to a sustainability standard as well. And it's been really nice um, having them come alongside us in that and help us figure out how can we have a 2,000 person event, um, have our sponsors still have the impact that they want and be as good to the environment as we can in the process. Um, So sustainable materials, they've been really good at helping us do that. Uh, I think the thing that I'm most excited about over uh, last year, as far as the venue goes, is that the space makes sense for us. We don't have to move floors to get to additional conference spaces. Everything is kind of close by. It'll be a natural flow in and out of programming rooms. Looking at it from a sponsor's perspective, I'm really excited about what the sponsor hall is going to look like and the interactions we're going to be able to have with attendees as they come in and out, which is really fun. I'm also excited that uh, we have mentioned this, I think, that the conference hotel, for those who have purchased a ticket, it's in your confirmation. You can book your your hotel room. It's right across the street. So as you leave your room in the morning to grab your coffee, you're going to run into WordCamp attendees. You'll be walking across the street with folks that you'll be sitting in sessions with later. And having that sense of closeness kind of gives it more of a summer camp vibe. Um, We're going to be eating and hanging out with and 
just being around all of our WordCamp community friends for several days. And that's incredibly exciting. So how about if we take this a day at a time? Because we have four days. And I'll start with day one, contributor day. So I want to hear not only about Contributor Day for people that don't know what Contributor Day is and the opportunities for them, but if there is anything unique to this Contributor Day. I guess that one's on me again, um, because I'm the mentor for the Contributor Team, this uh, Contributor Day team this year. First of all, like what, what are Contributor Days? To me, they're a big part of what makes our WordPress project continue forward in a a healthy way, right? We're a mostly volunteer-driven project, and people's lives ebb and flow for all kinds of reasons. People can contribute heavily at some times and less at other times, um, but these uh, these days gives give us the chance to really mentor in and bring in new folks to continue that healthy flow of people into our project. And so these days, it's not just about the work that gets done on that day, although that's great. That's good. It's great that we get all of our teams together and can make some progress, write some code, write some documentation, whatever it is. But to me, the coolest thing is bringing the people together and the mix of the old folks that have been contributing for a long while and the new folks that have never contributed and get us all in the same space and working together. That's the coolest, most exciting thing about Contributor Days for me personally. Um, To that end, what this one's going to look like, we have lots of space, like I said. We have a nice giant hall that we're going to be able to have all the contributors in at one time. So that is going to facilitate a lot of that meeting the people that you haven't had the chance to meet before, getting to know the people that you've maybe only ever known digitally through their, you know, username on Slack, getting that chance to sit across the table from one of them or or work together on a project. And so we have plenty of space to do that. And then we have a number of breakout rooms that we're going to have available so that smaller groups can go off into a a slightly lower noise area to to work on something heads down if they really want to for a while. We're going to even try to schedule out some of the times for those rooms so that if there are specific projects that teams want to work on and want people from other teams to be able to join them, they'll be able to at these in these breakout rooms. I can say that I'm definitely uh, excited just not just to be a sponsor, but to be probably leading the the marketing table and just to be a contributor. I love that. You know, it's like, it'll be my third time leading, but I love that kind of in the beginning, this is a little, very small, quiet phase on contributor days. And then within 15 minutes, people start working. There's this nice buzz. And then they go to lunch and then they come back and then you have this big networking effect of people just crossing tables and they begin to like really get into the work and they begin to get into the community, especially when I look at new contributors, they go from pretty shy before lunch to pretty happy and active and comfortable in the second part. So I'm pretty excited about that for all work camps, I would say, definitely for US. Yeah, for me, I think it's sometimes I spend more time at often with the community table, I'll spend time there or within the community team. But I think this year I'm going to choose to buzz around like a fly and be the fly on the wall and just listen in because so much for me isn't about actually getting my head down and working on things, but I'd love to hear what's going on. And there's some teams I've never really sat and listened to for a while. So I think that's going to be my goal this time around. It sounds like the perfect kind of venue for it and the space for it. So, um, yeah, a lot of great stuff. Hey, it's me, Bob WP, and I just wanted to drop in and, of course, thank all the sponsors who will be at WordCamp US. But I did want to give a special shout out to our own sponsors who are also stepping up as WordCamp US sponsors. GoDaddy, Hostinger, OmniSend, 
Avalara, and Weglot. And if you're going to be there, stop by, say hi to their teams, and thank them for supporting us here at Do The Woo. Also keep an eye out, as I'll be visiting some of their booths, maybe doing an episode or two, or some other fun WordPresser thing. So, hope to see you there. That leads us into the next day. So this is actually different because everything, we're usually like, okay, contributor day. Bam. Then we got two days of the event. And I would like to hear about the showcase day because this is pretty cool. Yeah. Wednesday, September 18th is showcase day. So it's day two of WordCamp US. And showcase day is something that's brand new this year for WordCamp US. And The idea is to showcase the most innovative, cutting-edge uses of WordPress. So we'll have folks showing off websites that they've developed that use really cool applications of WordPress. And not only sites, but also plugins and just anything within the WordPress ecosystem. I'm super excited about Showcase Day. I think of everything that I'm psyched about for WordCamp US, which is a lot, Showcase Day is the number one. I'm, I'm Just the caliber of, or the quality of presentations that we have in store for that day is phenomenal. And I would encourage everyone who's attending WordCamp US, you do not want to miss Showcase Day. It's the place to be. I was actually going to tell Aaron that I'm pretty excited about Contributor Day, but I'm extremely excited about Showcase Day. It's like the number one thing. I I have a general, like a rough idea what's going to happen, but I actually don't know what's going to happen. And the way that Julie just mentioned that what they have in store is going to be amazing. I want to be there early just so I can secure a seat in front. And I want to stay there, you know, to use the bathroom before I go (laughs) so I don't move because I know that I'm going to get like half the team to come, leave the other half walking around and networking. But this is going to be uh, something that we all have on our calendars and we're fighting about who's going to be able to show up or not. It's definitely something that people are going to want to watch for the speaker and talk announcements that are going to be coming out very soon that will cover both the regular classic programming days that, that you were talking about, Bob, as well as Um, this showcase day, there's going to be some really exciting stuff. I think that we can probably even talk a little bit to the kind of inspiration that launched this day. Last year, we had a a really fantastic talk by NASA that was showcasing how they were using WordPress to run their site. And they did a show-off. This is how we're doing it. And then they also did a little bit of like Behind the scenes, this is how we did the thing. And it seemed like that was an extremely cool way of showing not just the big number that we always hear, like, oh, WordPress powers 43% of the internet, and it goes from these really big, exciting sites down to everybody's hobby site. Um, But instead, it really dug into what are some of those? What is WordPress really capable of? What what does some of that 43% actually look like? Um, and so we thought that worked great. Let's expand that out. Let's give that a whole day because we're doing way more than one cool, exciting site. There's a ton of amazing stuff happening that's powered by WordPress. And so we want to get the chance for the folks that are doing these cutting edge, exciting, interesting, innovative things with WordPress to show us the, the sort of wow side of what they're doing And then ideally, some of them to even come in and show us the how. We did this amazing thing, um, but how could you do something similar? And so that's how we're trying to target this day. Have people showing off the wow, and then have some people also digging into the how. Ideally, exciting us about WordPress and showing us how we can all level up to do that kind of exciting stuff. So we have Contributor Day, Showcase Day, and then we hit the... The big event for two days. Now, I think how I'd like to take this is there's so many pieces that happen during those two days. Let's dive into it. And I'd love to hear from all three of you on this. I know we say this every year, but one thing that WordCamp US has done consistently well and then better every year is that we've got an incredibly 
diverse uh, range of speakers um, and talks for those two programming days. Um, and not only do did we build programming days with diversity in mind, but they're excellent quality talks. Um, so the what we will have available for folks to listen to and interact with is perhaps the best programming that we've put together so far, which is really exciting. <clears throat> and something that we try to do year over year is improve and learn lessons from other word camps and take those into account as we start building our programming. And that was one of the things that I learned uh, fairly quickly on joining the lead team this year is how little I know <laughs> about what goes into planning a word camp and how much thought and work goes behind the scenes for a schedule can be announced. So it was really cool to watch come together this year and then, you know, be extra proud of the product that's coming out of it. There are two pieces that I want to highlight from our pro from our schedule this year that are different than last year and perhaps previous years. One is that we are weaving showcase day talks throughout the Thursday and Friday programming as well. And so the showcase talks will be, I believe they'll be highlighted on the agenda in a different color, just so folks know that it's a way to have that thread woven, not only on Wednesday showcase day, but also throughout the Thursday, Friday programming. And then we also this year have included a networking hour in the schedule. That's at the end of the day on Thursday in the sponsor hall. And this is based on feedback that we've heard from WordCamp US attendees about really valuing the networking opportunities that they find at WordCamp US and wanting some more dedicated time to meet other folks who are there, whether that's attendees, sponsors, speakers, and get to know them, get to connect with them on a meaningful level. And if you're an introvert, that's not something you need to be concerned about. We're going to make it as easy as possible for folks who are perhaps a little less comfortable in those situations to find like-minded folks and connect with, uh, with people who have similar interests and passions within the WordPress space. As an outgoing introvert, I really appreciate that. I like to talk to people, um, but it can be hard to figure out where my people are, I guess, so to speak. Like, where are the people that, that I can bring value to that conversation or do my part or learn something new and interesting? And so and we're, we're trying to bring the, um, the sponsors in on that a little as well. You know, one of the great things about WordCamps is that our attendees, uh, they're really our primary focus, right? We, we try to keep things extremely affordable for them to attend, to make sure that their experience is amazing. I, I try not to talk about the money too much because it's not what everybody wants to hear about, but every attendee costs us far more than they pay for their ticket to attend. And the sponsors are what make that possible. But not only do our sponsors come to us with the the money to make this possible for all these attendees, they also come with often experts from their companies that have a wealth of knowledge to impart to our attendees. And so at times like these networking hours, it gives us the chance to leverage some of those experts and say, hey, if you want to talk about this thing, there are experts at this sponsor booth Y'all can go hang out during networking hour and pick their brain, learn from people who are managing thousands or tens of thousands of servers, how to better manage your server, right? Like there are those people around um, and we're going to be able to make that available to our attendees during networking hour. Bernard, you said this is your one year anniversary as a sponsor for OmniSend then. To me, that's kind of mind blowing because it feels like you've been around a lot longer than that and more word camps than that. I don't know. I'm thinking, wow, that's a lot that's happened in that period of time. What does WordCamp bring to you as a sponsor? And especially hearing all of this. So I have two perspectives. I have one as a sponsor and one as a sort of a contributor and a contributing member. So sometimes it's a bit hard for me to separate those two. But most both of them are related to people, I would say. One on the contribution side. So, of course, there's some challenges with contributing to WordPress. <laughs> but every time you meet people in person, you get this surge of energy when you see like-minded people who are all working together, giving up their free time, uh, sponsored or not, 
they're giving up their time to build this thing, continue pushing it forward, and they, and they put all of their passion into it. And I think that this is the basis for where we as sponsors see value because then you create a community of companies or plugins that are also have the similar kind of philosophy. They have the same vibe. They are there, of course, to earn money and to make sales and all that, but they have at the basis, it feels like they have this urge to help each other, just whatever it is. So we have a lot of people that we may not find any particular way to work with, but we just want to connect with them and network with them and keep in touch with them. Uh, and just hope that at some point in the future, we will find some business reason to stay in touch. But for the most part, we are the, the most valuable thing that we get there is that we find, we network with people who are valuable based on their value, based on their intelligence, based on their passion. And then the business reason comes in a little bit second. Uh, and I think the other reason is that Omnisense started more in the Shopify ecosystem. And that one, it is a very interesting place, but it is pretty different because that one tends to be a bit more transactional, firstly, on the surface. And so there's a lot of value placed on the size and scope of your business first, and then whatever value you have secondly. And here, we, no matter who you are, you can talk to Matt, you can talk to Joseph, you can talk to people who you may not have had any other opportunity to talk with before. And then you can find, again, places in which you can build that relationship later on. So I think for us, from the first time, like I said, uh, when our CEO and VP of marketing just attended WordCamp US, which was last year, they've come back with so much fire. And every time we go to the WordCamp events, the flagships or the small ones, we have that fire to reignite it again and again and again. So I think the, the value is one that we found one time and it is just continuous and it is always increasing. So it's almost an addiction. <laughs> I would say everyone is fighting to go to the next WordCamp. Uh, and I think the team we're sending keeps on getting bigger because everyone just wants to go. That's hard to summarize, but I think people, that's my word. <laughs> I love that. If we can be that place where it's like, hey, come to WordCamp US, get fired up, be the person that comes back to your team with a, a, a million great ideas and a fire behind you. Um, I love that. I, I hope we're that for all kinds of companies and people. I think that anyone who has any doubts or anyone who's just a bit curious. Only thing I would say is, as Aaron said, the tickets for WordCamp is pretty cheap. Just go attend the WordCamp, go to the four days or the three days or just the two days, even just one day, just go to contributor to showcase day and you will probably catch fire within two or three hours, I think. So any doubters, your doubts will be relieved pretty soon. And I think that from someone that has been going to WordCamp since uh, I think my first one was 2010 and I've gone to various ones over the years. I've spent many years at what I call other conferences where, like you said, they're very transactional. And I think one of the things people need to remember is that when you walk up to a sponsor at WordCamp, the best thing about that is you're not shoved in the face with a product. You actually get to meet the people behind the product. And when I moved into the WordPress space, that was one of the things that stood out most to me was I never felt like I got to really know anybody at a company through a conference because it was that. And you're going to get to know people. You're going to have good conversations. You'll probably meet them later on at a party or you've already met them and you're just reconnecting again. So you're going to meet people. You're going to talk to people and you're going to probably make friends. It's really valuable. And after all that is done, you go to all these side events. And you're going to go to breakfasts and lunches and dinners and wander around Portland and drink craft beer and coffee and eat food, then comes the social. Yes. I'm so glad you brought up the social. I was ready to talk about it. We're there now. End of day four, and it's time for the social. Tell us about the social. All right. Our four days of WordCamp US conclude on the evening of Friday, September 20th with the WordCamp US social, which will be held at OMSI the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry. And it's a really cool museum on the, on the river with a submarine, an, an old submarine that is in the river and attendees can go into the submarine and tour it, which is pretty cool. There's a planetarium programming running throughout the event so people can pop in to see different planetarium films. And there's going to be refreshments available. The most important thing to know is that this 
party, this WordCamp US social is included with your WordCamp US ticket. Bring your badge. Your badge is your ticket for admission to the social. And if you have a guest with you who's in Oregon traveling with you, maybe not attending the daytime programming, just buy them a ticket for WordCamp US. Make sure that you print their badge at the registration desk, and then that's their ticket to join you as a plus one at the social. It's Yeah, everyone's welcome. It's going to be a, a really, really lovely event. And, and an opportunity to get to relax and meet folks and see old friends. Excellent. So we're going to wrap up here, and I think everybody's excited. The thing is, probably people say, Bob, you don't sound very exciting, but I'm holding it all inside me. That's how I do my excitement. It's, I, I never sound super overly excited, and I'm sure anybody here can attest to that. But, yeah. It's, I'm, I've got my flight booked. I've got my hotel booked. I will be staying right across the street. Bob, you've booked your flight. You've booked your hotel. Have you purchased your WordCamp US ticket? Oh, yeah, I did. And did I purchase the last one? That's what I want to know. You did not purchase the last ticket. There are still tickets available. If you are listening to this and have not yet purchased your WordCamp US ticket, go to your computer right now and do that. Please get your ticket now. It, it's really helpful for us as we're planning to have a clear sense of numbers and we have tons of space. So everyone who wants to come can, but just make sure you get your ticket as soon as possible. And we talked about all the great sponsors and I could list them all, but please go to this site, make sure you visit all the sponsors. And if you want to be one of those great sponsors and all of us clamoring up to you, are there any spots left? Yes, there are several spots left. Um, and there is an interest form available on the website as well. So if you are thinking, maybe I'd like to consider sponsoring this year, uh, reach out, have a conversation with our sponsor team. In particular, we've got a couple of our lowest cost sponsorship opportunities available for $5,000 you can have a presence in the WordCamp US Sponsor Hall, which means that a couple thousand people will be visiting your table. And it's a yeah, a great way to have that presence in the Sponsor Hall. That's called the our author level sponsorship. Very cool. Well, first of all, I want to thank Bernard for co-hosting and also lending his perspective on the whole thing. Do make sure and visit the OmniSend booth. Find Bernard. Tell him what you thought about him as a co-host and if he should come back again. It lived up to the expectations. It was the most fantastic 15 minutes of my life. Excellent. And thank you three and the entire team. This is huge. It's amazing what you pull off. There's going to be all these volunteers helping you. And it's just your hard work and everything just is There's so much gratitude. You mentioned volunteers, Bob. I think we also have a few volunteer spots still available. So if somebody is listening to this and moved to contribute to WordCamp US as a volunteer while you're actually there, send an email to us at wordcamp.org and let us know that you want to come as a volunteer. Cool. Well, tons of opportunities. So uh, yeah, go to us.wordcamp.org and the dates are September 17th through 20th, so it's coming up real quick. I'm excited. Please come and say hi to me or find me somewhere. If you're one of those volunteers that actually volunteered afterwards, come up and I'll take you around. And I'll introduce you to Bernard because you'll love the guy, and I'm so looking forward to this. And just want to thank all four of you for joining us for this particular episode and yeah we'll see everybody at wordcamp us so thank you very much this is great thank you thank you yay wordcamp hey bob wp here and i'd like to thank you for tuning in to wordpress event talk if you're not subscribed just head over to do the woo.io forward slash subscribe or find us on your favorite pod player and remember, you can subscribe to any of our shows directly or hear them all on our Do The Woo full channel feed. And lastly, we welcome your thoughts, insights, and feedback on all of our episodes. So just head over to dothewoo.io and leave a comment. Until the next time.